Hey friends, Rachel Alford here from Cozy Nooks Designs, and today we're gonna go over how to make a crochet color work chart or graph using Stitch Fiddle. I have made a lot of tapestry crochet patterns. It's one of my favorite ways to crochet, and I often get the question of how do I design these words in crochet? I always use Stitch Fiddle, and so hopefully this tutorial will help you. If you have additional questions after watching, go ahead and drop a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. So there are six steps to design your own chart or crochet graph, and those six steps are first, design the graphic, two, make the gauge swatch, three, import graphic, four, input gauge size, five, adjust the design, and six, export. And we'll go through each step together, so hopefully you'll be able to understand and be able to confidently make your own chart, but let's just go ahead and dive in. So the first step is to create your text visual, and you can do that through Word, PowerPoint, any sort of software that lets you create a graphic. I like to do it on Canva, and so you go to create a design, and you can take any of these templates here that they have. I'm just gonna create poster. Um, this is just the sizing, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then here on the left, they have different um, templates that you can choose from. So if you like the font of something, like if you like how that looks, you can choose that template. Um, I'm just gonna click this template here and we're gonna pretend like we're making a pillow that says, welcome home. Um, so you delete everything out that you need to and then you need to say share and download. And I'm gonna do it as a JPEG, but you can do it as a PNG if you want. So as it's downloading, there we go. I need to crop this so that it is a square so that it will fit my pillow design because if I'm making a 16 inch pillow, 18 inch pillow, I need this to be a perfect square. So I'm just looking down at the numbers in the right corner by my cursor and there's my square. I'll get it centered to how I want it and crop like that. All right, so now we can go to Stitch Fiddle. You can see I've done a lot of different charts because I love tapestry crochet. So what you need to do is hit Create Chart and either Crochet or Knitting. I'm gonna do Crochet and then we're gonna do a um, tapestry crochet project together. So we're gonna click the Crochet Color Work and then just no preference for yarn. And we're gonna do from picture so that we can input our graphic. Um, this is an old one, so I need to do choose picture. And then go to my downloads. See, that's the old one. This is the current one, okay. And open. So you can see this is what it looks like and it looks really nice right now, but if you look, the size is huge. So what we need to do is we need to input our sizing. So we need to make a gauge swatch. When you make a gauge swatch, you are just making a basic square and the stitch that you will be using for the pattern. And for most tapestry crochet projects, you're gonna be using single crochet. You can use other ones. And then of course, if you're doing corner to corner, then you will not be doing single crochets. But for tapestry crochet projects, it's best to use single crochet. So I made a five inch by five inch square. You can see here. Um, and you want it to make to you want it to be five inches by five inches or at least bigger than four inches because you need to measure between four inches. So you need to um, I'm not doing the beginning part because my kids stretched out. You can see how it's curling there. So I'm just picking a part that they have not ruined. <laughs> with my measuring tape. Um, and then I am going to measure four inches. So you want to measure not the single crochet that is right up against the edge here, but you wanna do it a little bit in. 
And so you can see I have one, two, three, four inches. So I am going from five to nine and let's count that together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 single crochets. And then for the rows, let's do it again. Five between five and nine here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, almost 15. So I'm gonna input those two numbers. Um, to be completely honest, I already forgot them because I didn't write them down. <laughs> so I am gonna input those two numbers into the Stitch Fiddle size calculator and I will show you how to do that. Now that we know the stitch count and row count for a four by four inch square, we can input those numbers here and I have the memory of a jellyfish, so I'm putting in random numbers here. And then we're gonna say that we're making an 18 inch pillow, which means we want our crochet piece to be 17.5 inches for the height and width because we want it to be almost the right size, but not so that it makes the pillow look full. If you make it too big, then it's gonna look, the, you don't want drape on a pillow. So that's why we do it slightly less. And then you can see so we will have 66 st stitches wide and then 79 rows. So you hit apply and you can see it looks kind of crazy right now. So we're gonna need to fix that. Honestly, this is the worst part. <laughs> you can see on the left here how many different colors we have. And if you only want two shades, you only want white and black, then what you need to do is you need to go through and cancel out these colors and merge them to the shade that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out these colors and merge every single one until we have only two colors. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll meet back up. I have successfully made it down to only two shades here. So now we need to clean this up and make it more uniform looking. Cause you can see like the M isn't symmetrical, the O isn't. Obviously there are some holes in this welcome. So we need to go through and make this all symmetrical. So starting with the M here, make this, like that. All right, the O. And really this is more of just like playing around with it and seeing what looks good. This welcome obviously needs a lot of work. So this is gonna take a while. This is probably my least favorite part of tapestry crochet is going through and fixing the graph on the computer. I absolutely love crocheting tapestry cro crochet, but going through and fixing <laughs> the letters, I don't enjoy, but it's worth it in the end, so. Okay, also, there we go. You have to make sure everything is connected, that there's no disjoining. My personal preference is also to not have um, something that's only one, uh, I don't like when it only has one row. I like when it's doubled just because when you turn your work, sometimes it can look strange because crochet is slanted. And so sometimes the wrong side and the right side won't line up quite well enough and so it will look really disjointed. So it's, oh, this M is really messed up. So um, anyway, it will just take some playing around with to try to get it how you want it to look. So I'm just going through here, trying my best to make it look somewhat together. And I'm gonna continue going through this 
and I'll show you what it looks like when I finish with it. If I were to actually make this crochet pillow, I think I would tweak it a little bit more, but for the sake of this tutorial, it's good enough. Um, the E went all the way to the edge here and you can't do that for pillows because you need to seam it. So just be aware that you might need to give yourself some space on the edges if you're doing a bag or a pillow or whatever project you're trying to make. Um, obviously a wall hanging wouldn't matter, but just keep that in mind when you're doing your charts here. So now that we have done, um, let's see, what step are we on? We, are on, we just finished step five of tweaking the stitch fiddle graphic in here, and now we can export it. And there's a few ways you can export it. Doing the written instructions, I believe, is a paid version, but for me as a pattern designer, this is crucial to be able to do the um, written instructions so that I can easily have that for my patterns. So you can go through and fix however you want it to appear. One nice thing is if you click more and import settings from other chart, you can keep it consistent from something you've already made by just importing those same settings. Now, it doesn't always work. Like I usually don't have these things, um, but so just make sure you actually go through and make it how you want it to so that it's consistent throughout your patterns. Um, but you can play around with that and figure that out. Um, and then, so once you have the written instructions, you copy them and you can paste that into whatever you need that for. You can also do um, download the actual chart into a JPEG or however you want it to. You can rotate it here. So if you want it, I usually have my pictures facing this way so they fit into my patterns better and then people can print them easier. But you just hit apply and it prepares the file for you and it will download it. Let's see, once it brings it up, we can look at it. See, and it has the row count and the stitch count. So you can see the right side of the chart here, that will be right side rows. And then the left side is working on the back side or the wrong side. But that is how you get the picture format. One thing that I just learned, which is game changer, is that you can share your digital files. And so I'm gonna start doing that for my patterns. So I can say anyone can view chart with the link, get this link, use that for my patterns, and then when they open up that link, it brings them to here, and what they need to do is click this little progress tracker row counter, and then it highlights what row you're on. So this is row one. Once I get all the way up to row 22. So I did forget to say this, when I am actually making a pattern, I like to make sure that my color work starts on a, oops, on a right side row. So it needs to be on an odd row. So this is 19 now, so that's correct. That's what I want it to be. So when the person comes and they get to row 19, then they'll be able to go block by block and do the single crochets across. Once they get all the way over here to the end of row 19, they click up and it goes to row 20 and they work back along the wrong side, switching colors when it switches on the graph like this. And I have a lot of different tutorials that shows how to do this. I'll link one right here now that will show you how to do that. Um, if you're unsure how to do that. And so it just 
makes it a lot easier to be able to go through digitally instead of having to print because I know a lot of people don't have printers anymore. So being able to share and do this digitally is the best thing ever. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you liked it. I am Rachel from Cozy Nooks Designs and make sure that you give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel for future free patterns and tips.